Uh, good morning and welcome to our webinar on crowdfunding. I'm Janet Rowland with the Center for Local Government at Colorado Mesa University. And Anthony Edwards is our speaker today, and he's the owner of San Juan Law Office, LLC, where he provides legal counseling to businesses across a broad spectrum of industries where building long-term business relationships with clients, whether large or small, is a priority. Uh, he serves as a corporate counsel for privately held companies, as well as assists startups in entity formation. And more recently, he founded Crowdfunding funding offerings and Main Street Crowd uh, in anticipation of the crowdfunded act of 2012 becoming effective in the months ahead. Uh, and from a, a personal perspective, as a former county commissioner, um, this whole crowdfunding is all very new to me. And so I'm very excited to have him here today to share with us some of the opportunities available through uh, crowdfunding. And so, uh, Anthony, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Janet. Um, as Janet said, uh, um, we're going to talk about angel investing and crowdfunding um, today um, and new avenues for rebuilding our communities, both uh, in the private sector and, and potentially uh, be able to utilize this uh, platform and this uh, process for um, community projects as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, and so the outline today will be, we'll talk about the Angel VC movement briefly and then crowdfunding investing coming to theater near you soon. Um, and I'll explain that as we go through. Um, the different forms of crowdfunding um, we'll discuss, green platforms and projects and, and other platforms as well. Then the concept of investing via crowdfunding, um, which uh, on, a, um, on a broad spectrum of the public um, is not allowed um, at this time and then a review of the Crowdfund Act, and then we can have a group discussion and questions. So um, just to, just kind of a, a background, investing in America in 2012, there's approximately $10 trillion um, now sitting, um, which is enough cash to buy the 120 of the biggest companies in the S&P 500. And they're sitting, a lot of money is now sitting in these many market mutual funds, bank savings accounts, CDs and other uh, more um, less riskier investments. And, and so we're in an age of safety. And so capital is not flowing like it was uh, in the previous decade. And if Americans just reinvested 5% or $450 billion of the trillions currently invested in these safe instruments into crowdfunding investing, it'd be 15 times more than what the venture capitalists did in 2011. So, I want to talk about the angel and VC movement um, in general, and there's a lot of nuances to this, but I, uh, so just remember, this is general. But um, a lot of businesses are seeking capital. There has been difficulty in the banking industry, although uh, from people that I work with uh, in the industry, this is starting to be um, becoming um, uh, less, less difficult than it has been, um, but it still is difficult. And so um, what, what kind of happened in the last few years is um, uh, there have been online where you can go to get private capital and businesses can go and they can post their businesses. Uh, so a business can enter their relevant business information, post it in the platform. Investors, private investors can review this information. Connections can be made. And um, uh, this can facilitate, basically, um, funding in, in a private sense. Um, um, so, but this is, again, this is private investors, and these are primarily accredited investor type of investors. And, and so um, it's, I think it's important and, um, to, to, to understand what, what accredited investors are, which is they, they have certain criteria and are, are a wealthy type investor. You can look online to get more of uh, what's required, but this isn't, an, this isn't the everyday public at this time. But a business that is, any business, whether they're an accredited investor, can go in and go to these um, different type of um, uh, platforms. Uh, the one that's uh, very active in, on a regional basis or where a lot of regional investors go to is Gus, um, which is pretty popular right now. On a national movement, it would be AngelList, um, and that's uh, at Angel, uh, I think I put angle.co, I think that's a misspelling uh, for the um, site, it's angel.co but where the businesses can go and try to connect with private investors to uh, receive uh, funding. Um, so that's a little on the angel VC movement. Um, a recent article, and that was just last week, uh, on the VC trend that a lot of venture capital firms are disappearing and um, I, um, why do VCs think things are looking up. Uh, but then it goes into, and, and the quote on the right, there seems to be driven by three trends, increased angel activity, 
Um, so go back to the angel list, the Gus, uh, increased corporate venture investing, which these are large companies, uh, you know, like your city groups and, and uh, that type of thing, and continuing lowering you know, the cost of the start of the software, which was what was driving a lot of, of, uh, of the investment for quite a while. Um, and I think I'll, I'll leave that on the VC trend there. Um, but what is crowdfunding? So crowdfunding comes in different flavors, and um, and I'll just put this out. So there's debt type crowdfunding. Uh, that would be like a site uh, like Prosper.com or uh, Somolend. Somolend is a really popular uh, site, and uh, Candace Klein, I believe, is her name, who created that really really progressive idea where people can go in and they can actually um, take funds and put into a company. They can vote on whether they want to loan money at a certain rate um, over a certain period to a company and get um, investment back. So basically it's, uh, in a lot of ways, an online banking opportunity or lending opportunity that comes from private investors as well. And um, uh, so uh, it, it's, it has a, a lot of potential long term. I think it uh, has a potential to um, compete heavily with uh, your local bank um, uh, with time on, on the um, commercial and business loans. Then there's so that's so that's debt crowdfunding where group groups of people can come in and be a part of the um, uh, platform and decide on what what businesses they'd like to loan money to and at what return. Then there's donation rewards based. Um, this is like a Kickstarter Indiegogo. Kickstarter being probably the most popular at least in the United States right now. And so to give you an idea what a rewards-based uh, or, or donation-based platform is, is that um, I, I usually use the um, uh, example of a group of people are together. They want to create a record. Um, they cannot create a record without enough money to go to the studio and cut it properly. Uh, a group of people can come in and they can they can put money in and, and the and the um, band or the musicians can in return for the money to cut the record can offer the first CD with um, maybe signed and depending on how much money you put in they can offer different rewards you know maybe the CD and signed is is twenty five dollars um, and then the and then with the t shirt or a, or a ticket to a event um, it can cut be fifty or a hundred dollars but usually the reward is worth much less um, than the cost of what what they're getting and, and this is this has had a, a pretty big effect um, and it's been um, it's been a really growth uh, there's been a lot of growth in this type of uh, crowdfunding the final um, is equity investing and that's where the crowd purchases shares in return for equity um, in 2011 twenty point five million dollars was raised um, according to Forbes, Forbes article, um, I haven't looked at the most recent figures, but it, it is it is um, happening overseas right now. However, and, and I want to make clear, um, private private investors and private accredited investors, wealthy investors, can participate in crowd type funding of invest of um, companies. However, the general public is not allowed to do this at this time, and it's not um, while it was made legal, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, uh, in 2012, the SEC still hasn't come out with the final rules. So I'm going to – next slide. Crowdfunding uh, revenue is growing. Uh, can you hear me still? Yes, we can hear you. Cut out for just Hello? a minute. Yeah, we can hear you just fine now. Okay, sorry. I, I, um, so, led by recent success of high-profile and high-capital funding campaigns on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, as well as many thousands of smaller projects, um, uh, crowdsourcing.org predicts that the amount of money raised by um, crowdfunding platforms will reach, you know, two billion, um, up 91% since 2011. So you can see that there's a there, this this type of um, uh, reward donation in any way is trending up now there's been recent um, there's been recent articles and and information by researchers saying that this is kind of plateauing um, on the reward donation and there's reasons for that I don't I don't want to there's not a lot of time to go into that now maybe we can talk about it later um, but it, it, it this type of um, 
uh, crowdfunding works. People are willing to go online and provide money to for projects um, and ideas. So to give you an idea of how some of these platforms are, we have uh, like this is Green Unite. Um, this is one that's working to uh, work with honeybees, uh, more of a green type of uh, uh, donation reward. There's also community enhancement projects like Citizen Investor, uh, where you can find and invest in local civil civic excuse me projects that you care about the most. You know, there's a, a re restore a historic hotel, uh, um, and then the bike pump stations. You know, th these type of things. Um, and then uh, here's Kickstarter. It shows you can go to Kickstarter and you can see what's going on on Kickstarter. And, and just to be clear, there's, there's hundreds of these platforms um, out there. And that's one of the issues is that, that if I want to find out what's going into my community, how do I find out what, what is going on in my community? Um, if somebody's on Kickstarter, you can go to Kickstarter and it will recognize by your IP address that you're in the Denver area or you're in Colorado. And so here's, you know, there's a couple of businesses there that you can go look. And I, I encourage you to go um, look at maybe some of the platforms in your area um, or uh, platforms and see what's going on in your area here. Um, now, crowdfunding investing, um, this is a new avenue for raising capital for, um, for businesses. And how this would work is a crowd receives a small stake in a business in return for investing capital towards an online funding goal and that they create uh, assuming and th these are all or none um, on the investment side of this um, they receive you know they receive a stake in the business and what and if you can imagine um, somebody in your community starting a business and people come together and they like the idea and they put money in and they they would you know and hopefully they would receive a return on that investment with time um, but this creates ambassadors and customers and advisors for your business on a local level and then a community level. Um, people who are going to invest are going to recommend the business. Um, they're going to potentially, uh, if they have background and you need assistance, they're going to advise you, uh, whether it's formal or informal agreement, and they're going to be your customers um, in, in certain circumstances, of course. Um, so. And so how would this work? So the general process is that the entrepreneur would post a project in a portal. It's a funding portal. And the crowd could evaluate the offering. There's a certain time limit, two months, three months. It has to be uh, decided at the beginning. And the crowd can pledge to invest via an escrow or transfer agent. Their money would be set aside. Um, and, and, if the, and then if successful, and the business, the business is funded. If not, the money would go back to the investor. They would never, it would never be, we think if it works like it currently is on the reward donation, that it would never charge your card. And, and hopefully that can be set up through the SEC rules that are still being formulated. Um, so then the agent would forward the shares to the investors and then the entrepreneur will, the business will report to shareholders and performs other duties as required. Um, which is yet to be determined. Um, so as it's written now, and Congress uh, approved it, the President signed it um, last year in April, um, so just over a year ago, um, uh, it allows existing businesses and startups to raise up to a million dollars of capital online every 12 months, uh, allows the general public to invest in these security offerings, no accredited, accredited investor restriction, and, and that's what keeps the general public from investing in private companies. Um, that's why the general public, uh, with few exceptions, wasn't allowed to invest in, um, uh, or has been allowed to invest in, in large growth companies. Um, provides investor protections and platform restrictions. Um, that's what's required um, in, the, in the rules. Um, the, these include the, the only way that your business can be uh, offered, uh, it has to be on a platform called a funding portal that must register with the SEC and a self-regulation or a regulated organization or broker-dealers um, can list these. 
um, offerings that are going to be allowed. Um, the maximum amount is the greater of $2,000 or 5% of income or net worth. Um, for wealthy investors, they'll be able to invest more, um, but nobody's going to be able, uh, of, depending on a certain income, uh, the general public in general will not be able to invest more than $2,000 a year in, in any offering. Um, and um, it's 10% of income net worth not to exceed $100,000 in all for um, uh, wealthier investors. Uh, the protections, um, we just talked about the, the investing limits. The background checks on issuers, all officers and directors of a company will have to be, will receive a background check uh, and any principal holding more than 20% of the equity. Um, all investors will have to provide, uh, there will be uh, risk-related disclosures they'll have to recognize. There will be information um, that, that, this is, that all of the investment can be lost, and the investor will have to affirm that they've received this information. So some of the outstanding questions we've received um, are, include, when can I sell my interest? Um, well, for non-accredited investors, the general public, uh, these these uh, investments will have to be held for at least one year, and um, accredited investors can buy back. Uh, the business itself can buy back um, uh, in the shares that are purchased, but amongst uh, the general public, these shares aren't for trading; they're for investing long term. A long term, I, I guess, would be one year under how it's been designed um, by inference, but. Uh, the rules have been designed, um, but um, it, you know that's so. So when is is after a year, and and then the next question is how, and, and this is this is um, this is a uh, hasn't been determined. Um, there's been speculation amongst the people in crowdfunding investing that um, that that there will be potentially small. Uh, micro stock markets developed across the country um, for these these um, uh, new new shares, and then and the, the question will be whether the companies that that uh, um, offer and are funded whether they'll want their shares traded regularly or whether they'll want to hold it um, like a traditional private company. So this is still um, uh, still not completely understood how this is going to work. Uh, what's happening? And for accredited investors, private companies right now, there are other there are other platforms that have been developed where private shares are trading right now, like Second Market, um, it's it's pretty popular one, um, uh, and and so this this is happening. I mean, it, it, this wouldn't be breaking a lot of new ground in so much the private shares being um, traded. They just they've not been traded by the general public before. How's valuation determined? Uh, I think that that's going to be determined by um, the general public, uh, how, how it's been presented, and and you know there's going to be a price for shares, and it's, you're going to be be able to identify based upon a couple of calculations what valuation they're providing for the company, and there'll be the general public to decide um, whether they they feel comfortable investing in the company. Um, and and then can my community create a micro stock exchange? And I that is. Are are you still with me? Yep, we're all still here. Hey, okay, sorry, I, I got a. So um, so on the can my community create a micro stock exchange? Um, this is um. I, this is yet to be determined, but it, I I think you could see small stock exchanges for, for liquidity of these uh, interests, these shares that could be created across the country. Um, but I, I believe we'll, we'll know more probably in the fall, and, and I'll go into that here in just a minute. Um, so what now? The SEC had 270 days from April 5th, 2012 to receive uh, public input and formulate the rules. Um, they they the deadline has gone and passed. The SEC is still creating the proposed rules. Uh, usually there's a notice and comment period. Uh, I think the, the shortest that would be would be 90 days, um, maybe less, but 90 days. And so they haven't, they haven't released the proposed rules yet. Um, if they do that in the fall, that, and let's say they did it in August, 
maybe September, September, October, November. Uh, then if they um, release the final rules in January, we're still looking at this investing part. And I want to make that clear, um, uh, the, the investing part not to be um, available until 2014. Uh, Washington insiders anticipate the rules to be released by fall of 2013. I believe those will be the proposed rules, just to, to just to clarify what I was just talking about. And so, crowdfunding investing provides a new, will provide a new avenue for existing and startup businesses to raise capital online. Um, startup exemption and analysts predict that the act could initiate half a million new companies over the next five years, creating 1.5 million new jobs. And um, it'll provide investors an opportunity to invest in their local and regional community. So I, that, that is the end. Um, and so I'm really open for questions sure. uh, and uh, discussion at this point. Okay, Janet. thanks, Anthony. This was really helpful for me to kind of start getting my head around how this uh, crowdfunding works since it is so very new. We've had a couple of questions come in, but I'll go ahead and let folks know that you can go ahead and type in your questions and we'll get to them in the order that we get them. Uh, one of them came in and it seems to be asking for clarification on something you just mentioned, but you talked about the rules being released in the fall of, of 2013. So the question is, does this mean that crowdfunding cannot begin until that point in time? And what point in time is that? So there's no crowdfunding right now. Is that correct? Well, crowdfunding is the idea of people coming together and funding uh, something. Okay. It could be a, it could be a project or it could be, um, it comes in different forms. And that's what I was kind of alluding to earlier, but right now crowdfunding for, um, well, let's say um, there's a community project to uh, clean up a historical facade in your community and uh, the, the owner doesn't have the money to do it. And, and so they, they, you could post that online right now without having to deal with any SEC, right? You're not, you're not mm -hmm. going to be offering shares in any sort of company. You're trying to uh, upgrade your community, okay? Or maybe it's for a park. The so, so that's legal and going on regularly right now. The crowdfunding for investing, where you're buying shares or units inside of a company as being an equity owner in that, is not allowed right now for, okay. for non-accredited investors. And, and, that, and there's, that, there's a definition of that. I don't want to go into it too mm – -hmm. I don't really want to go into it, but most of America is not a, are not a, accredited investors. Their, their net worth has to be worth a certain amount. Um, they had to make so much money over a certain amount of time, depending on whether they're married um, or single, and um, those rules are all online. Um, okay, so then, so go ahead. Well, so then, if it just has to do with more of a nonprofit supporting a cause, like you mentioned, the historical facade cleanup, that can happen right now. It's the actual investments in buying shares that can't. So then, to go back to your example of the, uh, the the band that wants to start a, or to record a, an album and they get the, the donations to do that, um, is can that be happen can that happen now or does that also have to wait? Yes, and I'm gonna go back here um, uh, as we're talking. Okay. Um, actually that doesn't have to wait. That that's mm -hmm. going on everywhere right now. And I would encourage you to go look at, you know, Kickstarter maybe uh, if you're doing a community project like the Citizen Investor right now, um, that can happen, um, and, and it's happening. And when we're talking about the growth industry um, on what I have up right now, that's donation reward-based. That's people donating to get a reward back. And it could be as simple as a letter from a historical society saying that you get this tax write-off or, okay. or being recognized in the newspaper. In fact, um, on Main Street Crowd, um, which is our our platform right now for crowdfunding, we uh, raised money, $10,000 for our local fire department. They, um, uh, they, they were able to find a, a fire truck, a ladder truck, which was much needed in the community um, for a very low price uh, from the Aspen Fire Department. Well, it's a little bit, uh, but, and they brought it here, but they needed hoses and things like that in the community here or in our community of 500 was able to raise $10,000 um, to put, get hoses and nozzles for that fire truck. So that, okay. that's going on right now and very okay. popular. 
And I think if you go back a few more slides in your presentation, there was one I remember, and maybe this helps to clarify, where you had debt and then you had the reward donation and then equity. And so is what you're saying is the debt and the equity investing are the two that aren't going to be available until 2014, but the donation and rewards based can ha is happening right now. Uh, and actually, um, re donation and rewards based is happening right now. The two <laughs> most popular in the United States are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. But depending on your project, you may want to go to Citizen Investor, or there may be another. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's hundreds of these do donation rewards based platforms. Mm -hmm. But on the debt side, it's happening right now too. If okay. you're an accredited investor, you you or on the debt side to participate, there are different rules than if to participate to put money into loans, okay? Okay. Uh, there's different rules than for the general public. Right. But but for the debt, if you wanted to go and get a business loan right now, mm -hmm. all right? So if a business wanted to go get a business loan right now, they can go to Soma Lend or Prosper.com um, uh, and should be able to do so. Okay. Um, and, and so what we're really talking about waiting on at this point of all the stuff we discussed on crowdfunding um, is the equity investing side of this, okay. um, and that's that's a company uh, providing shares in their company to become an equity investor, a shareholder essentially, and and raising money in that nature. Okay, great. We we have a variety of folks on our webinar today. Uh, some are in the actual economic development industry, and others are elected officials or local government officials. And so we have a question from a, a county commissioner. Um, and how can I, as a county commissioner, use this tool for economic development in my community? Um, I, I think there's in, in multiple ways. I mean, on the one hand, maybe uh, to make sure that all your uh, business economic development f officials understand these different types of uh, funding sources and, and avenues for funding for the business community. Um, in regards to on a, on a direct level, um, I believe that you know um, we're, we're a lot of a lot of uh, um, communities are, are running uh, very difficult budgets right now. Um, people if people are coming and wanting to uh, enhance their community. Maybe it's uh, for a, a new banner downtown, or maybe it's for an enhancement of a park um, a, in a neighborhood. You know, I, I one of the ways that you could uh, that that um, uh, monies could maybe um, go further is I think all the people in government are understand matches and, and maybe they could uh, commit to a match um, if, the, if the local group can raise money together. Now maybe they don't have to go on a crowdfunding platform but that's one way they could go and raise money and, and put a letter out there. The, the, um, the county commissioners or the town trustees have said that they would, um, they would match dollar for dollar or one third or two thirds if we can raise this much money for this community enhancement project. Great. Um, I think that's one way that, that crowdfunding actually could play a role in um, community projects that aren't necessarily essential services or priority projects um, or, or capital improvements inside of the community. Great, thanks. Uh, another question, what types of businesses are best suited for crowdfunding? Um, and, you know, I, I think that's, boy, that's a, um, some people have thought that mainly it would be tech. Um, I, I, and, and as far as investing wise, um, I, I think it's projects that people can see on a local level that, and 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 on the community level that would enhance their community and realize they're going to uh, receive a return, you know, or a potential for a return. Mm -hmm. um, there may be some people that are altruistic that just like the idea of filling that space next door to them and might put some money in. Um, rather than have a empty space next door, but um, the, I, I, I think if you look at the different types of things that people have done reward donation for, and this is a big assumption, but that that uh, that variety is huge, and so I think even businesses, um, uh, potential businesses that are raising money, will be the variety of types of businesses will be um, pretty pretty diverse as well. Um, one, you know, one of the questions that we get as well also is what type of entity should we form to get ready for this and mm -hmm. whether it's an LLC or an S-Corp or a C-Corp and 
Um, we are still not uh, – the rules haven't come out enough yet, and, 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 and there's not enough information yet to know um, based on what that's going to be, what that would look like. Um, sorry, I diverted, Janet. I just um, – I, I wasn't sure uh, about the question if it was talking about. Um, the, that's actually – that's actually very helpful. And um, you mentioned 2014. When in 2014 um, do they expect to have this roll out? And maybe that's a good time to have you come back and kind of fill us in on what's you know happened since then. But what what point of 2014 will we know? Well, Janet, I'm I'm anticipating, and you know I'll keep you updated, um, and anybody that's interested. Um, but I'm anticipating that we'll have proposed rules. There'll be a note this fall or late summer. There'll be a notice and comment period, 90 days uh, from that date, and then they'll go and they'll finalize the rules. I, and I'm being cautiously, cautiously optimistic, but I could see, um, you know, I, I think the proposed rules will tell us kind of a little bit more, and, and we can we can speculate, and uh, that may not be the best thing to do about what some of the other things that are just going to be required, um, and then. The final rules should be out in January. You know, I think that I, 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 I'm hoping uh, that they're out then and, and they're not too um, difficult for smaller businesses. I mean, it'd be nice mm -hmm. um, for businesses that are just raising eighty thousand dollars if there's if their families is across the United States because a lot of us aren't necessarily we don't necessarily have our families in one state that they can be able to utilize this and not have to pay a fortune to my profession, the legal profession and, mm -hmm. um, and others to get, you know, to get their offering up because there is, there is difficulty, um, for financing in, in, um, the less than $250,000 range. Um, and a lot of banks that we work with, cause our, our platform that we're developing is more of an economic development platform, but, um, a lot of the banks are, aren't interested in commercial loans and aren't, even up uh, not less than a million, you know, um, and, I'm, and, that, and that's, there are banks that, that do in the, in the 50 and $150,000 range, but a lot of times these businesses have to have um, some sort of uh, security, you know, it's, it's, right. so for startups, that's really difficult, Janet. Okay, well, we have one last question, last question that's come in, so I'll ask that before we wrap up, but if you have another question and you're on the line, go ahead and, and submit it now before we wrap up. Um, do you is there a comprehensive list of platforms? I kind of had that same question too. You mentioned there's a lot of them. How does someone know where they are? Is there some sort of website that has all of them, or how do we find them? Oh well, and that's that's a good question. I, I we we look from time to time to see where they might be. There's a company called um, Crowdsourcing.org. I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to search in there and say number of crowdfunding platforms and, and, and that type of thing. I, and, and you could even Google it. I, I wouldn't even venture to guess today what they are. I mean, I knew that right. last year, I think there was 117 by one account in the United States. Um, whether they're all active or not, um, I, I can't. That, that's the other thing, right? Some of them mm -hmm. are preparing for equity, and, the, and so they're not even up yet. And the question of whether they'll be able to meet that criteria and what the, when the SEC comes out with the final rules is still questionable. I mean, um, for those that are in, in, in reward donation, um, you know, they may be here this week and gone next. And I don't mean to be negative. Um, it's just um, it's on the reward donation, it's very competitive right now. And, um, and, and the leaders really are Kickstarter and Indiegogo um, on, that, on that side. However, you know, I, I put a couple other platforms for different type of projects out there. Um, okay. but, but as far as all of them, I, I would Google it and look it up. Okay. Um, and right, thanks. We had one more question come in, and that is, um, what is the difference between donation rewards and angel investing? Okay, so, so angel investing would be um, like if you were to go on to Gust and you were going to go or go on to AngelList and – um, you would put your product or your uh, company out there and the private investors would connect with you. Think about Facebook, except for investors and companies that want investment. Um, and that, that's, some people may get mad at me for using that analogy, but uh, just for purposes of right now, I think that's the best way to do it. And so now you can uh, meet people, you can start discussions in there. 
um, and the people that are in there that are uh, recognized as investors have, been, have confirmed that they're um, accredited investors, wealthy investors, and so you start talking, and then um, they can potentially invest in your company if you if you all come to terms. Um, uh, this is this is a facilitator, right? I mean, you're not you're not using your money to um, go through there and 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 uh, transfer your money in there as much as you're you're meeting with people and um, working on on maybe putting a deal together. And this is really for equity. So the reward donation is very much more public. Anybody can go and reward, donate or or um, yeah, provide money to any sort of business or cause. Now the businesses, if it's a business and there's not a nonprofit component to it, they're going to have to pay. The business is going to have to pay taxes on that as income. Um, uh, you know, there's a there's a tax liability that's associated with this. But the 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 angel the angel investing is is investing. It's it's having a stake in the company. Whereas a reward donation is is receiving something in return for their donation one time. Great. Thank you. Good question. I don't see any other questions, so I guess you've answered everyone's questions. Uh, thanks so much, Anthony, for doing this presentation for us. Uh, it's really helpful to have a better understanding of crowdfunding, and I will look forward to uh, hopefully having you back uh, next year when we have the kind of the final rules and you can help us uh, figure out the rest of it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Janet, and I look forward to seeing you next year. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Okay.